Hello, or should I say, hey. <laughs> On behalf of the tens of thousands of Boeing employees here in Puget Sound, welcome to Seattle. As many of you know, Puget Sound is home to Boeing commercial airplanes. Our commercial lines, including the 737 MAX, the iconic 747, our state-of-the-art all-composite 787, and our new 777X with foldable wings are all built here in Seattle, just up and down I-5. It may come as a surprise to many of you that Boeing is the largest private employer in Washington, with nearly half of our global population located right here in this state. We are a diverse and we are an eclectic bunch. We are engineers, machinists, accountants, lobbyists, auditors, community investors like myself, salaried, union, non-union, gay, straight, transgender, and from every color of the rainbow. Joining you here today, up from about 12 last year, are over 100 Boeing employees. Where are my Boeing peeps? All right. For these reasons, it is so fitting that Boeing is the first ever host city sponsor of the Out and Equal Workplace Summit. I am also happy to say that Boeing will be the host city sponsor when this group reconvenes next year in Washington, D.C. <laughs> Out and Equal's mission is to achieve LGBTQ workplace equality, and we stand together with Out and Equal and with you to support these efforts. Last year, Boeing celebrated its 100th birthday. Whether it's connecting the world through commercial aviation, protecting our troops through state-of-the-art military aircraft, exploring the universe with next-gen spacecraft, enabling a communications network with our satellites, or inspiring future engineers through STEM education, Boeing is an integral part of our global human journey. Our success is attributed to many factors, not the least of which is that we are a company that places a strong emphasis on diversity and inclusion. We know that we are at our best when we embrace the diversity of people, ideas, and experiences that are embedded across our global team. We know our people at, a, at their best when they feel a sense of belonging and of equity. Boeing's LGBT employees hold more than 50 patents for research technologies, an accomplishment that contributes to Boeing's competitive advantage and highlights the power of diversity. I am proud that in 2018, for the fifth consecutive year, Boeing achieved a perfect score of 100 on HRC's Corporate Equality Index. Our employee group, BIPA, the Boeing Employees Pride Alliance, is today supported and counseled by Tim Keating, our Executive Vice President for Government Affairs, and a senior member of the company's Executive Council. As an aside, it was Tim who hired me, promoted me twice, and encourages me every day to be myself and to tell my story. Earlier this year, the company held its first LGBTQ and Allies Leadership Conference, an event that allowed employees the opportunity to hone our strategic priorities, discuss best practices in workplace inclusiveness, and chart the course for Boeing's future using LGBTQ assets and allies. And while these achievements should be celebrated, there is always turbulence in flight. Emblematic of our journey, BIPA first tried to gain official recognition from Boeing in the 1990s, but its application was denied. They had to organize as the Bonsai Tree Club at one point, in essence, hiding who they were as botanists. <laughs> However, company policies quickly changed to make Boeing a very welcoming place by the end of the decade. When I came to the company nearly eight years ago, I remember taking a quick assessment of my colleagues looking for people like me. I remember saying to an office colleague and a friend who I knew to be gay, are we the only gay people here? He responded, drawing a line from Little Britain, and said, no, John, you're the only gay in this village. <laughs> now, nearly eight years in, I look around and I see many employees and allies within the Boeing company. For example, Out and Eagle's very own board chairman, Michael Cox, also served as Boeing Vice President for Global Town Solutions. 
employees like Demarcus Alexander, who leads our Oklahoma City BIPA chapter, or Deborah Smith, with whom I partnered recently on a workplace safety project, or some of our many ardent allies like Angela Hall and Mike Moraski and Ann Toulouse, the newest member of Boeing's Executive Council. Ann is our Senior Vice President for Communications and the Executive Sponsor of our BIPA chapter in Chicago. Ann happens to be here with us today. Ann, thank you so much for your support. It means so much to all of us in Chicago and across the Boeing team. Sometimes knowingly and other times unaware, we stand alongside men and women who work to bring change to our company from the inside through deliberate actions or through quiet examples. We each have a role. We all affect change simply by being what is true to us. Our journey inside and outside the company continues, and our journey for belonging and equity continues together. And while I'm thankful for recent changes, through the hard-fought efforts of many of those who came before us, we should not forget how these changes have, were achieved, nor lose sight of what we have ahead of us. I'm reminded how often it is, and sometimes remains today, much easier for gays and lesbians not to share our lives fully with our colleagues, to hide from our authentic selves. For a heterosexual person, it's common to share with your office colleagues your weekend plans, your news of your engagement, a wedding or the birth of a child, or how easy it is to bring a plus one to an office event. Yet these circumstances aren't that easy or simple for a gay man and woman to navigate without a thoughtful consideration of the consequences, without gaining a hairy eyeball, without hearing whispers, or without rising suspicions. For me, then, I knew when to go out, I knew when to stay in, and I knew how to get things done. Years ago, I was clerk of the House Appropriations Committee on Transportation. My subcommittee chairman was a nice guy from Northern Virginia. He was a devout Christian, a conservative Republican. One day, he came to my office, and he handed me a videotape. Yeah, I'm showing my age here, but just bear with me. It was of Dr. James Dobson, an evangelical author, extolling the importance of showing up as a dad. As he left my office, my staff and I giggled to what to me and to us was obvious. I was single, a fop, wearing the, the day's fashions. I believe it was overtly evident to everyone that I was not going to marry, I was not going to have a family, at least not in the narrative of the day. But it was not apparent to him, despite all the clues. It wasn't his fault, it was mine. He didn't know me, and I didn't share me or my story. Another time, my best friends and I decided that we we're going to run in the high heel race in Washington, D.C. for Halloween. Long story short, we donned our finest drag and our over-the-knee patent leather stiletto boots. We were fierce <laughs> and unrecognizable, or so I thought. Um, we ran our house out that night, and I look back on that night very fondly. The evening was filled with good friends, half of whom I've since lost, loads of laughs, and many, many photos. Well, a few days passed, and I was again at my desk, and the phone rang, and it was the staff director of the full committee. He summoned me to the Capitol, noting that the full committee chairman wanted to see me. The full committee chairman was a tall, imposing man from Louisiana. I walked into his Capitol office, and I stood at his desk, the full view of the mall and the Washington Monument behind him. He was a big and very powerful man. He tossed a photograph on his desk, and he slid it towards me. I looked down. It was my friends and a few men and women with the broadest of smiles, having the best of times at the high hill race. And he asked, do you know who that is? Well, my stomach sank to the floor. My heart jumped from my chest. My hands began to sweat. And in that very instant, my private life and my personal, my personal persona, public persona came crashing together in that very moment. 
Oh God, I prayed. I summoned all of my courage and I replied rather meekly, yes, Mr. Chairman, it is I. After a short pause, he responded, don't be silly. And he pointed to a woman's face I didn't recognize. And he said, no, that woman, she's my daughter. She said you looked amazing and you had by far the best costumes on the street. And with that, he chuckled too. What he did in that moment was to liberate me. As my employer, he accepted me and he began to laugh with me and not at me. A lot has changed in 25 years and in some respects, struggles remain the same. I know the story I just shared could have ended a thousand different, likely worse ways. Many of you here in this room have probably experienced those worst case scenarios. I haven't had to confront flagrant disrespect in my workplace or be denied a service or promotion because of who I am. But we all know someone who has. Just look at who is sitting next to you and see those invisible scars. People like us need to stick together. Together we are better than we are alone. Together we bring change. Together we shall persevere. Together we shall belong. Together we are making a difference. My name is John Blasey. I am Boeing's Vice President of Global Engagement and I'm one of the many voices in Boeing's LGBT community. Thank you to Out and Equal for your tireless efforts for workplace equity. Thank you all for your individual struggles, your deliberate actions, and your quiet examples. Because of your effort, our future is bright. And at Boeing, this is the vision of the future. Now pressurized, 30 seconds and counting. Astronauts report it feels good. T minus 25 seconds. 20 seconds and counting. T minus 15 seconds, guidance is eternal. 12, 11, 10, 9, ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one. 